Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman. Welcome to the Week 6 Waiver Wire Show. Frankie, what's happening? Not much, Greg. Excited to be here. It's Buffalo Bills Week. How are you doing? Always happy to be here for Buffalo Bills Week, so I'm doing tremendously. Let's begin at the quarterback position, and we'll start with the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen coming off the bye. Doesn't get any better. Facing off against the Miami Dolphins, the first of several Bills we're going to talk about on today's program. Why do you like Josh Allen, other than the fact that he's facing the Dolphins? So Josh Allen still has some issues, obviously, with turnovers, but he is progressing. We see the completion percentage up this year to 62.6%, and that was a huge knock on him coming out of college. That's up from last year's 52.8%. So he is progressing in some parts of his game, and for from a fantasy perspective, he's a lot like Lamar Jackson. I'm not saying that this guy's going to go out and run for 150 yards like Lamar Jackson just did in week six, but Josh Allen has 41 rushing attempts on the season. That is second to only Lamar Jackson, can, and Josh Allen did not play in week six because of the bye, so we know that he can make some plays with his legs that helps him overcome some of his deficiencies in the past game when it comes to interceptions and fumbling the football as well, so we know he's going to run a little bit. He has a cannon. He can make plays down the field, improving the completion percentage as well. And he's going up against the Miami Dolphins, right? It's just a great matchup. In week seven, they're allowing the most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks this season. 14 passing touchdowns and just one interception. And you know what, Greg? It's not just week seven against the Miami Dolphins. If Josh Allen was dropped in your league because he was on a bye, if you play in a one-quarterback league, how about these next five matchups? Miami, the Philadelphia Eagles, Washington, at the Cleveland Browns, and at Miami Dolphins again. So the next five matchups look phenomenal. We're all in on the Buffalo Bills. Absolutely. The Bills' schedule, it is right for Josh Allen. So this isn't a one-week by-replacement quarterback. This is somebody that, over the next few weeks, you may want to use. Let me throw this out there with you, Frankie. I know you don't have the schedule in front of you, and I didn't prepare you for this, but Josh Allen or Jared Goff right now? Yeah, I'm going to lean with Josh Allen. Look, we've seen quarterbacks like Josh Allen take advantage of these matchups in the past, you know, I remember Marcus Mariota, either his rookie or sophomore year, he had that stretch of seven or eight games where it was a really, really, it was really tasty schedule, and he was able to make the most out of that. Josh, uh, Jared Goff just does not look like himself right now. This Rams offense is broken. I don't know if it has to do with Todd Gurley, the offensive line, not being where it has been in years past. I know that you could still use Jared Goff as a streamer in some home matchups, but he was home in week six, didn't look good against San Francisco. Give me Josh Allen. Josh Allen, a quarterback, not just for now, but for the future as well. But if Josh Allen isn't available, there are other directions that you can go in this week, Frank. What is one of those directions? Yeah, we'll go with Jacoby Brissett going up against the Houston Texans in Week 7, coming off the bye, so you know, T.Y. Hilton should be good to go in that matchup, and T.Y. Hilton has typically torched the Houston Texans in his career. Houston Texans, not known for their secondary, an aging secondary, one that does give up a lot of fantasy points, as well. Jacoby Brissett has played well this season. He is a top 12 fantasy quarterback in terms of points per game. Frank Reich, like we said coming into the season, has put Jacoby Brissett in a really good position to succeed here. Frank Reich, one of the smartest minds in the game right now, one of the smartest offensive minds. He knows how to scheme players open, and again, he knows how to get the most out of his players. He's doing that with Jacoby Brissett right now, who is completing nearly 65% of his passes on the season, he has 10 passing touchdowns to just three interceptions. Can make some plays with his legs as well. You know, maybe rushes for 15, 20 yards, which helps add to his floor. And I mentioned going up against the Houston Texans. That total right now is at 48 points, so we're expected to get some points in that game. And they've allowed six passing touchdowns over their past two games as well. So as I mentioned, this secondary is not a great one. If Josh Allen is not available in your league, I'm looking at Jacoby Brissett as someone that you can stream in week seven against the Houston Texans. And I don't even think it's just streaming him against the Texans. Frank, you mentioned Jacoby Brissett right now, a top 12 quarterback. We need to treat him as such. Maybe the name isn't sexy nor the team, but that offensive line is as good as any in the NFL. Brissett, a top 12 scorer on a weekly basis. So let's just believe what it is. Read the facts. Look at the numbers. Kobe Brissett deserves to be in your starting lineup. Let's head out to the running backs, and that brings us right back to Buffalo, where Frank Gore faces off against one of his former teams, and that's the Miami Dolphins. Gore starting, and we'll see if Devin Singletary is active this week. We know Frank Gore is going to get the majority of the workload, which puts him in a good spot, especially after you, after you saw what Adrian Peterson did this past weekend. 
Yeah, to quote my buddy, WWE superstar Eric Young, we will now be referring to Frank Gore as Infinity Stone, specifically the Time Stone. This guy continues to turn back time the way that he's playing, averaging 4.4 yards per carry so far this season. A couple of weeks ago, back in week four, Frank Gore ran for 109 yards against the New England Patriots. They haven't allowed a single other running back to run for more than 38 yards on the season, this Buffalo Bills offensive line is playing extremely well. They're second in the NFL in adjusted line yards. That comes according to footballoutsiders.com. So the offensive line is playing well. They're run blocking extremely well. And Frank Gore is playing extremely well also. I do think that Devin Singletary is going to be back from the hamstring issue. See if he's available as well. I would want to own both of these guys. But, you know, the next five matchups, again, for the Buffalo Bills are phenomenal. They face the Dolphins twice in that span. And even if Devin Singletary is back, I would expect Frank Gore to see you know, 12 to 16 touches per game in that range. This Dolphins defense are allowing the most fantasy points to opposing running backs on the season. They're allowing 4.8 yards per carry to the position. And we just saw another senior citizen in Adrian Peterson run for 118 yards. I think Frank Gore is going to be in play as a low-end RB2 high-end flex in Week 7 against the Miami Dolphins. Frank Gore, the ageless wonder, is going to be back in the saddle this week after the bye week for Buffalo. And you know that Buffalo wants to run the football. Whether it's Josh Allen or Frank Gore, they're going to be successful doing it because it's against Miami. Frank Gore, a no-brainer waiver wire pickup if he's out there. But if he's not, you should also make sure Alexander Madison isn't out there either. He's the hack of the Dalvin Cook, but this past week, he outrushed Dalvin Cook and also just had two less carries. That was a pretty even split. I'm not saying Dalvin Cook's losing his job, Frank, but that was kind of eye-opening. Yeah, I'm starting to think that Alexander Madison is not just a handcuff. He has standalone value as well. Coming off career highs, 14 carries, 63 rushing yards against a really, really stout Philadelphia Eagles run defense as well. He had 22 more rushing yards than Dalvin Cook in this matchup on two less carries, as you mentioned. He's not going to steal Dalvin Cook's job. We understand that. But we also understand that the Minnesota Vikings want to run the football. When they are in neutral game scripts, which means when the game is within seven points either way, they're one of the league leaders in running the football. Even when they're not, they are second in the NFL in rush percentage so far. So we know deep down they want to run the football. I know that they just got Stephon Diggs involved and they got Adam Thielen involved. But I think still at their core, the Minnesota Vikings want to run the football. And Alexander Madison is really talented. I think we're starting to uh, open our eyes to how good he really is. He was He's a rookie, obviously, just drafted in this year's NFL draft. He has 252 rushing yards. Here's a fun fact for you. That's the same amount as Joe Mixon. That's more rushing yards than Austin Eckler and James Conner on the season. So going up against the Detroit Lions in Week 7, a team that is allowing the fourth most fantasy points to opposing running backs, I think that Alexander Madison can actually sneak in as a low-end flex play. I'm not saying that it's a great play, but if something were to happen to Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison instantly gets vaulted up to a high-end RB2, maybe even low-end RB1. That's how much I think of this kid. So make sure that he's owned. I think he's up there as one of the best handcuffs with the Chase Edmonds of the world as well. So just go out there and make sure that Alexander Madison is owned in your league. Maybe not just a hack of any more. President Alexander Madison in a good spot to help fantasy owners, especially those desperate with the bye weeks here. Moving on to the wide receivers, we go to Dallas, where they lost Amari Cooper to what looks like just a deep bone bruise. That's, that's okay, and hopefully won't keep him out for a significant period of time. With Cooper out and Randall Cobb out this past weekend, Dallas turned to, speaking of Eric Young, an old favorite, Tavon Austin. I didn't think we'd be talking about Tavon Austin in 2019, much like I didn't think we'd talk about Adrian Peterson and Frank Gore in 2019. And yet, Frank, here we are. This is why we play the games in fantasy football, Greg, because you never know what's going to pop up. And here we got Tavon Austin falls into our lap heading into week seven. Honestly, the Dallas Cowboys offense and specifically their wide receivers are just really banged up right now. Greg, I know you mentioned that Amari Cooper is dealing with this quad issue. Randall Cobb also dealing with a back issue. That's why Tavon Austin was able to play as much as he did in week six against the New York Jets. He played 76 snaps in week six against the Jets, 48 of those coming in the slot. And we know that in today's NFL, the slot receiver is so, so valuable, especially for fantasy football. So this does come with a bit of a caveat. You have to pay attention to, you know, whether or not Amari Cooper is going to play, whether or not Randall Cobb is going to play. Cobb has dealt with so many injuries in his career, specifically over the past couple of seasons. That's why the Green Bay Packers were all right letting him go and sign with another team. So, 
you know, I, just based on all these issues, these injuries, I do think Tavon Austin has uh, an opportunity here. And he's coming off a game where he led the Dallas Cowboys in receiving. He had, you know, seven targets as well. And he's going up against the Philadelphia Eagles that – are just getting shredded. We saw what they just allowed against Stephon Diggs. They allowed three touchdowns to Diggs. They allowed an additional touchdown to Adam Thielen out of the slot as well. And the Eagles are really good against the run. I don't think that's going to stop the Cowboys. The Cowboys are still going to try and force feed Ezekiel Elliott in this matchup. But the way to beat the Philadelphia Eagles is through the air. I think Tavon Austin can have some success. I'm not saying that he's going to have a dozen or two touches, but I still think that he can get, you know, six to eight, six to ten targets in this matchup if everyone is hurt. So just pay attention. Uh, Tavon Austin in a really good spot against this Eagles defense. For the first time in seemingly years, I actually trust the Dallas offense to be creative because Kellen Moore has proven as an offensive coordinator and a play caller, he can surprise you. And I think Tavon Austin's reemergence is part of that. We'll see what Randall Cobb plays. We'll see if Amari Cooper does as well. But if Tavon Austin out there, he's not going to cost you very much. He is out there. But he's not going to cost you anything. Maybe take a shot in a good spot here against Philadelphia. From one Dallas slot receiver to an ex-Dallas slot reliever. We go back to Buffalo, where Cole Beasley is always worth talking about. Frank, year after year, I don't care what team Cole Beasley plays for. But when the buys come, you need someone that's almost guaranteed to give you five for 50. Because in a PPR, that's 10 points. That's basically Cole Beasley every single week. You got to love him. You got to love Cole Beasley. You got to love all the Buffalo Bills. As I mentioned, it's Buffalo Bills week going up against the Miami Dolphins this week and also five weeks from now. Their entire schedule for the next five weeks looking pretty good for the Buffalo Bills. I have interest in both Cole Beasley and Duke Williams, but honestly, Greg wouldn't let me talk about Duke Williams. So we're talking about Cole Beasley. And Cole Beasley is coming off his worst game of the season, only three for 21 on three targets, but he does have at least nine targets in three of five games. He's tied for the team lead with John Brown with 22% of their target share. Seems like he has a nice rapport with Josh Allen so far this season. Josh Allen, someone we thought coming into this season, really likes to target down the field, which he has done with John Brown, but he's also learned to check it down a little bit. That's why we're seeing that completion percentage go up for Josh Allen. A lot of that is because he does have a nice rapport with Cole Beasley. And throughout the bye, they traded away Zay Jones, uh, so he's now gone on the team. He was getting, you know, not, not a massive target share, but he was getting a few targets. Some of those probably go Duke Williams' way. Some of those probably go Cole Beasley's way. And, of course, the Dolphins are allowing the ninth most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers this season. Terry McLaurin just went off for two touchdowns against them. It's a safe play in a really good matchup. It's Buffalo Bills week. You know, I had a feeling Frank was going to go off about Duke Williams just knowing because I didn't want to talk about him. Because you know what? Not very good. Cole Beasley, very good. That's the Buffalo wide receiver you want to own. But Frank's right. You can't have too many bills this weekend facing Miami. Moving on to the tight end position, I will admit Frank wanted to put Dawson Knox here again. We did it. Instead, we're going to another Frank guy, and that's Darren Fells. I believe he wanted Fells last week on the show. I didn't let it happen. But Fells led the Texans in receiving yesterday with DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller actually taking a back seat. Jordan Aikens, he was out there a lot. And it's clear when Kenny Stills doesn't play, they give you a lot of two tight end personnel, which leads to Darren Fells being on the field a lot and being successful. This week, Fells and the Texans face off against the Indianapolis Colts. And if you lost Will Disley, you may want to pick up Fells. If I would have told you that there would have been a week this year where Darren Fells was going to lead the Texans in receiving with DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, and Duke Johnson all he healthy, you would have looked at me like I had three heads. But ultimately, he's getting the job done. He's been a top 10 tight end each of the past two weeks. The targets have been there. Season high, seven targets, six receptions in week six, 69 receiving yards as well. They run a lot of two tight end sets. Jordan Aikens is on the field also, but Darren Fells is the one that's been a little bit more consistent. He's seeing more work. He's seeing more targets, and it's a good matchup going up against the Colts, who are allowing the third most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. This game, as of now, has a 48-point total, so we could see a little bit of back and forth. It's more of a desperation play, but with Will Disley going down and four teams on a bye, I think a lot of teams are going to be desperate for tight ends. That's where Darren Fells comes in the mix. Desperate for a tight end, Darren Fells makes sense. Who would have thought, as Frank said, with Houston having DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller and Duke Johnson and Kiki QT, it would be Darren Fells leading the way. He's a fine waiver wire pickup here at the tight end position this week. Whether you don't want Darren Fells and you're spe spectacle, you're skeptical is what we're going to go for. Kind of like I was last week. What's another direction that you can go in, Frank? 
We're going to go with your boy here, Greg. It's Rhett Ellison of the New York Giants. Now, I realize this one comes with a caveat, much like Tavon Austin, who we spoke about earlier. It all is dependent on how healthy Evan Engram is. Evan Engram dealing with an MCL sprain. This is something that he's actually dealt with in the past as well. So I know that they've had a lot of time off. They're going to have 10 days off. They played on the Thursday night football game in week six against the New England Patriots. But I don't know that Evan Engram is going to be back in week seven and this is a prime time matchup going up against the Arizona Cardinals. We love, love, love targeting tight ends against the Cardinals. We just saw Austin Hooper go for eight catches, 117 yards, and a touchdown against this Cardinals defense. They're allowing the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. They've allowed a touchdown to a tight end in every single game but one. Thank you, Tyler Eifert. I've never heard of handcuffing tight ends, but I'm going to make it a thing. I'm actually going to bring that up right now. If you own Evan Engram... I would go out and pick up Rhett Ellison just to cover myself because I want to have the tight end that's going up against the Arizona Cardinals. And even if you don't own Evan Engram, if you're worried that he might miss this week and you are desperate once again for a tight end, you don't get a better matchup than going up against this Cardinals defense. Uh, and Rhett Ellison coming off a game where he just had a ton of targets. He saw 25% of the target share in that game against the New England Patriots. So these are desperate times. They call for desperate measures. But going up against the Arizona Cardinals, pay attention to Evan Engram's health. Coming out of the mini-bye week, last week playing on Thursday Night Football, Evan Ingram did practice on Monday and thinks he has a good shot to play. If he doesn't, you always want the tight end against the Arizona Cardinals. It held true this past weekend. So make sure you get Rhett Ellison in there if Evan Ingram is inactive on Sunday. One last pickup to get to, Frank, and that brings us to your defensive pickup of the week. If you're streaming defense, there are a couple out there. A lot are owned in the best 60% of leagues. But why don't you give us one that's not? Yeah, first and foremost, I'll just throw a few of those defenses out there that are owned in a few more leagues. But if they're available in yours, make sure that they are added. It's the Bills going up against the Miami Dolphins defense. And the 49ers, who just shut down the Los Angeles Rams, they are going up against Washington. But if both of those defenses are owned, I'm looking at the Kansas City Chiefs. And I understand that this is a weird one. The Chiefs are normally viewed as a team that doesn't have a great defense. They're allowing the fifth most yards per game so far on the season. But they are going up against the Denver Broncos on Thursday Night Football in a short week. And the Denver Broncos are allowing 9.3 pressures per game. That's 10th most in the NFL. And Joe Flacco has an interception in every game but one. I do think that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be playing with a lead in this game against the Denver Broncos, which means we're going to get a lot of dropbacks for Joe Flacco, which means we have opportunity for sacks. We have opportunity for turnovers. He's throwing a lot of interceptions so far this season as well. I understand the Chiefs defense, not normally a good one, but I think that they're in a fine spot going up against the Denver Broncos, Greg. Fine spot against the Denver Broncos. Not a fine defense, but against Denver, who can't really score Thursday night, a short week. If you ever take a shot on Kansas City's defense, hey, why not now? That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. Frank, good luck in your waiver wire this week. For like the third week in a row, I don't want any of these guys. Well, thanks, Greg. I can only work with what I'm given. Nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Good luck, everybody. Tomorrow, J.J. Zacharyson joins me, and we go the players that he's buying and the players that he's selling. Get those waiver wire bids in. We'll see you back here on the Hurry Up tomorrow.